Hello, I'm Mark Deluzio. Over the past century, our constitutional republic, grounded in the rule of law, has been transformed into a tyrannical democracy, orchestrated by unelected bureaucrats and globalists. The Constitution is now treated as a suggestion, not the law of the land. Welcome to the Constitution Solution, one podcast under God. Hi, I'm Mark's co-host, Suzette Lawrence. Our intention is to explore the Constitution and discuss how our freedoms and constitutional rights are violated by those very politicians who took an oath on the Bible to uphold it. Learn how the Constitution is the solution to our country's problems. What do we need to do to restore our inalienable and enumerated rights? Class begins now. Suzette Lawrence, this is Mark Deluzio. Suzette, how are you doing today? Well, Mark, I'm doing fairly well. Thank you. I, um, I'm i very excited to be talking about with you and exploring and, and seeking, actually, clarification on this ranked choice voting. I didn't even know this was a thing. So, I, you know, it's right. the, the research or the investigation so far has been very interesting. What, what is ranked choice voting exactly, Mark? And by the way, Steve Zipperman talked about this on our last episode, uh, uh, who's running for a state Senate up in LD03 in Arizona. And uh, and he talked about this a bit too. And and we said, you know, we've got to get into this because this is just another uh, 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 another assault, Suzette, on our on our republic. Okay. Yes, isn't and, isn't Steve an LD1? I'm sorry. I'll, I'm I'm an LD three LD one yeah, yeah sorry. he's the LD right. one yeah that's sorry. okay I got, I got that he's wrong. my area you know yeah he's in your, yeah you should know your LD so uh, <laughs> by the way before we get going I want to talk about that dress you have and I love that dress oh um, thank you well I you want me to tell you the story yeah because if you're watching this... on YouTube or Rumble you won't see this on the Apple podcast but it's a beautiful green dress and it's like I I commented on it earlier before we got on the show and then you told me the story about it. It was, so, it was actually worn by Martha Washington, right? <laughs> this is my no. mother's green <laughs> island dress. And I was looking for something. I wanted an eyelet, eyelet's back in style. And I saw a really pretty eyelet dress. And I'm by four. So everything I buy has to be altered. And I thought, man, do I really want to spend all this money on this beautiful dress? And then I have to get it altered, blah, blah, blah. And I'm talking to my sister and she says, I have mom's eyelet dress. And she wow. sent it to me along with the slips because you have to have a slip under it, of course. Oh, so, yeah. I, I is, never go anywhere without a slip. So, yeah. Okay. Geez, not if you're wearing this. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so this dress is 75 years old. Wow. And it was handmade. And it is my mother's size, which Ada and I both are her size wow. so we you know so no no adjustments required it, do you know who do you know who made it i don't there's no tag in it oh wow but you can see where it's hand sewn well it's go on youtube or rumble and take a look at it's a beautiful green color and it looks it, I, I just it's just fantastic it's amazing thank you so, thank you yeah. i love so, it now what are we talking about oh rank choice we're voting. talking about rank choice voting i'd rather talk about your dress okay but uh <laughs> But let's go into ranked choice. Okay, let's let's Suzette, let's talk about what it is first. First okay. of all, it's incredibly complicated to understand it, okay, which is one of the fundamental problems, not the key problem with it, but it is one of the problems. But let me just read what it is if you're not familiar with it. You know, right now how we do this, we vote and whoever gets the most votes wins the election, right? Not the electoral college is a little bit different. And I won't get into that now. But when you're voting for your congressman or your senator, Whoever gets the most votes, they don't need 50% of the vote to win. If there's three candidates and one ends up with 40% of the vote and everybody's below that, then guess what? That person wins. Okay. Ranked choice voting is this. It requires voters to assign a rank to each candidate on the ballot. So if there's five people, let's say, running for, well, when I ran up in your district for Congress, there were seven of us, okay, that ran. It would have required you, Suzette, because I was running in your district, uh, Congressional District 2, to rank all seven of us from top to bottom. So I like this guy first. Of course, that would be me. 
Uh, and then, and then the next guy, Ralph Blackman, Eli Crane, all the, you go right down the list and you would have to rank each one. Okay. So regardless of whether or not you support any of those candidates, okay, it doesn't matter. You have to rank them. If no candidate gets 50% plus one vote, okay, that whoever gets 50% in one vote will win the election. If, if everybody is below, all seven in this case are below 50, which is highly likely, by the way, that nobody got 50%, the lowest ranking performing candidate is knocked off the ballot. Just like that. Boom. Then his votes or her votes are redistributed and you go back and you recalibrate everybody's vote based on the composition of that last person's candidate's votes. It's kind of complicated to go through the math here and we won't. Put it this way. At the end of the day, the person in the original round of ballots who got the most votes could end up losing. As a matter of fact, very likely will lose the way this whole thing works. And what happens so, is, yeah, go ahead. So, you're, so what you're saying is that, say, five people are running yep. for a seat. And and this is, um, usually it starts in primary elections, but is but it could, this could be applied in a general election as well. So if you have five people running in the primary election, and I go in and it's going to make, it's going to force me to vote five times. I have to rank each of those candidates, number one, two, three, four, five. Even if I don't like two, three, four, five, even if they're like, I, you know, why it, I, this is the part of this that really bothers me more than anything is I don't want to vote for number two or three or four or five. Mm -hmm. You know, these people may not be anyone that I have any kind of political or moral or any kind of simpatico with. I want my number one guy. And I think this is one of the reasons, and I know we're going to talk about this. In, well, we may as well address it here. Sure. A lot of people don't vote because they don't like anybody. Mm -hmm. That's why they're not voting. They don't feel represented. They don't, you know, I mean, I know I, I vote. I have never missed an election, a primary or a general election since I was 18 years old. So for 50 years, I've been voting. But Honestly, there, I can count the times since I started paying attention where I even felt like maybe 20% represented. I do not feel represented by the people that are in office as a rule. I just don't. They're not. So, so if I go if with this ranked choice voting, I'm forced to, it's like taking a survey, right? You take a survey and they're asking all the wrong questions and they're asking the questions to get to a specific because they want to be able to, at the end of the survey, direct um, the narrative in a certain way. So they ask questions a certain way. This is the same thing. It's like, why do I, first of all, why do I need 50%? That's the whole thing is you have to have, the person has to have 50%. The number one no, guy well, has to have 50%. The case, if that was the case, Bill Clinton never would have become president. A lot of people wouldn't have become president, you mm -hmm. know, because not everybody gets 50% and you want the field wide, you know, preferably you would have different candidates that are included in debates, public debates, so that people get a sense of who's running and what's up and, and that kind of thing, as opposed to just Democrat, Republican, and then making fun of, of everyone else. Well, um, it, also, it also forces the voter then to forecast what might happen, okay? Yeah. And and that will also then uh, manipulate how they think about voting, right? You know, and by the way, you mentioned voter turnout. I've got some stats here. I know we're in Arizona, uh, which is a pretty politically active and hotbed state. <laughs> it is a uh, it is a uh, a, 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 a target. Of the globalists, well, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a yeah it's a key state, uh, and it's a battleground state. But unfortunately, in the Arizona twenty twenty two elections, in the primaries, voter turnout was only thirty five percent of registered voters. We have some four million registered voters here, 
And in the general, only 63%, Suzette. That, that's pathetic to me, okay? What message does that send to you, Mark? What does that say? Well, I think because of the 2020 elections and what people thought about the, whatever you thought about whether or not the elections were stolen or if there was fraud, or, and by the way, the audit did show so many inconsistencies here uh, that nobody wants to talk about, but uh, it tells me people are just giving up and saying, my voice don't count. Uh, I'm, uh, it's it's going to be rigged anyway, so no matter who I vote for, it's not going to matter. So they stay home. And that's exactly what the tyrants want. That's exactly. We're right. handing them exactly. They play the long game. We play the short game. Exactly. Good. Good way to say it. Everybody's say it. busy trying to make ends meet, trying to pay their power bill, trying to do these things. Um, you know, California has ranked choice voting. Yes, they do. And it's a nightmare. You know, I was just listening to um, um, Victor Davis Hansen talking about the his electric bill. So in California, something like 30% of the people can't pay their electric bill. Right. So instead of turning off their power, they they have figured they have a way to have the people that can pay their power bill pay for these other people. Yeah, that's great. So if you that's make so uh, over 50,000 a year, then you pay X amount towards yeah. the sky's bill. Richard Davis, by the way, is a phenomenal, I mean, he's one of the best out there. I listen to him all the time. And I'm friends with Jack Fowler, who's his co host So uh, and Jack, Jack helped me on my campaign, as a matter of fact. Well, you know, that's just some of the outcomes of what happens with these tyrants that get elected. You know, so Suzette, this system, you know, disconnects people from the issues, number one, okay? And it will allow candidates with marginal support to take office and win, okay? Exactly. So like said, well, you know, we have a chart that we're not really going to go through the numbers here, but if you can look this up on your own and and, and take a look at, uh, go to Ballotpedia, and they have a nice chart in there that explains yes. it. But, you know, bottom line is uh, the candidate in their example who, and by the way, this is proven out in reality too, the candidate that won the election with the most votes ends up losing in this scheme. It's a scheme, okay? And and so uh, uh, the voice of the people then, okay, so the votes in the last candidate who gets eliminated are redistributed back to the other candidates, something that you may not have voted for at all, okay? So, or ranked accordingly. Right. So it also takes away the true debates and issue-driven dialogues amongst candidates, okay? And it eliminates the whole, hey, I got a binary choice here of A or B, right? It, it's kind of tough. And it disenfranchises voters because ballots that do not include two ultimate finalists are cast aside to manufacture a false majority for the winner. The person who would win in the example on that Ballotpedia example did not get a majority of the votes, but they won, okay? Because they recast and redistributed your vote Without your say, by the way. So I vote. I now it's mm -hmm. one registered voter, one vote. In this system, it's one registered voter. It could be four votes, five votes. I'm vo voting four, five, six times. This is like on the same ballot, and then that vote is getting my my. Say there are five people on the ballot. My fifth vote is going to get redistributed. That's crazy. Among, amongst amongst people who you perhaps never even would rank. I I'm being forced oh, okay. to vote for someone. So what yes. happens? What happens if I love um, one candidate and really resonate with this candidate? I think he really reflects who I am and and how I am politically. And then, you know, number two, three, and four, I don't even. I don't, I'm not simpatico with them. Let me put it that way. Well, and, and guess I, what? I don't support them. Tough and then, and then I end up having to vote for them. The flux is that your vote now put them in office and you would never even give them a time of day. Right. And, and yeah, so and I can't give yeah. them all a five. Like I'd never vote for you. You know, I have to vote them like one, two, three, four. I right. have to rank them. That is just it, so well, that to me is very Soviet. 
I'm sorry. Well, think about this and, um, right now. Think I'm about sorry. this right now. It's, Just think about this from the social. I'm going to get into the Constitution in a minute, okay? But think about this from the social perspective uh, of right now, how do voters feel about our election process? Process Not really good. And they think there's all kinds of complexities. It's rigged. Uh, you've got all these uh, crazy things happen. We're changing the custody. We're breaking our own laws, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. There's such low confidence in our voting system. Once you add this complexity, Suzette, to this, you might as well just forget it. And okay, and and then you will see voter turnout go down to the teens. Okay. And this is something. Um, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. I have to interrupt you more. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry, to lose my train of thought. But what you were saying about the. Um, Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll think of it. Well, okay. no, it, it's a it's a very complex, very complex to understand. Okay, and to think that everybody's going to be on the same page and understand it, and sing kumbaya when they find out that candidate A had thirty five percent of the vote and had more votes than anybody else, but that person lost. Can you imagine what the what the outcry is going to be in that case? We've got people bending over backwards. This was my thought. We have people bending over backwards to get people to the polls. Okay. This is the big issue. People can't get to the polls. You know, right. they, they, you know, there should be no impediment to getting someone to the polls, even like no ID. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, even though we all have IDs and we know how to get places and there isn't a candidate out there that doesn't have some kind of ride share program. If you wanted to vote for Mr. B and you called his office and said, hey, I'm at such and such address, can do you have a car service coming around on, you know, they've got people that will drive you to the polls. I've done it myself, pick people up and taken them to the polls. That's so right. you can get to the polls if you want to get to the polls. That's number one. All of these, all of these efforts have still resulted in very low turnout. It's very, and I think that, and, and the turnout is low because people do not feel represented. And the way to whitewash that and to make it all look better is to, this ranked choice voting is a way to do that because you can say, oh, he got over 50% of the vote. Well, yeah, after he voted five times, you know, I mean, it's it's a ridiculous, it's, it's just a transparently um, duplicitous, type of system when we have a system that works it's called vote on the day of the vote you know if for a military and people that are out of the country we have absentee ballots correct and you can get it you know but this whole like mail-in vote because you're too i'm sorry if i offend anyone but i'm gonna say it if you're too lazy to go vote then, you know, and you've got to mail it in three months in advance, and you don't even know if your candidate is going to still be in the, in the running. It makes no sense. It's a reason to not do mail-in voting. Because the, the example that one of these was used was Bernie Sanders in California. Hit all the people that voted for him, and a lot of them did, lost, lost their vote because they voted too early. So- oh, one argument in my mind is the mail-in voting is a total disaster for that very reason that you it, could have like Fetterman in Pennsylvania. You, you vote for him early. The guy has a stroke. You might think differently about him. And See, I would not have because I thought he was impaired before he had the stroke too. But anyway, that's another subject for another day. Right. Well, no, <laughs> look at the Hunter Biden laptop case. Well, you know, which, you know, all of these things that we were told were big lies. Well, they weren't lies. You know, he did have a laptop and there was all this information. And you have this, um, what's his name? Bobby Bobolinsky. He yeah. had a business partner that came forward and, ex and talked about how the president was involved in all these things. You know, if that had been, uh, if we had a free press, you know, it, and people understood that we don't have a free, I think a lot of people think we do have a free press and that people are telling the truth and they don't understand that their congressmen and senators are shielded, that they're allowed to lie to you and not get in trouble. Um, they're actually shielded so they can get on TV and make something seem worse, make a mountain out of a nothing, 
burger and you're listening and you're thinking, well, Chuck Schumer wouldn't lie to me. You know, he's he's a congressman, you know, I mean, he wouldn't lie to me. Lindsey Graham, my goodness, he's a senator. He wouldn't lie to me. But they're shielded. They actually can lie and they do. So unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, Schumer's a senator, actually. Oh, and, senator. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And, and so that's OK. He can lie then. Right. Um, by the way, you break up the laptop, not to get distracted here, but Bill Barr. Uh, Trump's attorney general held back by uh, Hunter Biden's laptop because he didn't want it to affect the elections. Well, guess what? Him holding it back did affect the elections. OK, and I thought that guy was a a, a, a creep from the day one. I never trusted the guy. And it turned out that he was an enemy of the, of the country. And uh, anyway, that's another yes. subject. But by the way, yeah. you brought up Fetterman. That was a good point. So so Suzette, let's let's talk a little bit about. The, the, there's, there's two things I'd like to talk about with you. Um, one is how these things get positioned to the American public, right? <laughs> and, and you know, you and I have talked a lot of times. I'm, I'm, I'm working with uh, Kim George right now, who's a congressional candidate. And I told her, you know, you got to really tell people there's no silver bullets at all. In, in any our, most of our problems that we have or issues, if you will, are very complex, as you know. Uh, you know a lot about the medical side of this with COVID and everything else. Very complex. And and there's a lot of tenants to it. And uh, when people said to me, what are you going to do about our water problem? Well, which problem do you want to solve for? What are you going to do about our border problem? Well, let's go through that and define the 500 problems that are with our border. Which ones are we going to look at? So when I look at the these solutions like the wall, okay, I'm for the wall. But everybody thinks the wall is a silver bullet. People forgot that we have airplanes. We can dig tunnels. People forgot that we have two open borders on our coastline that don't always get protected. We have Canada's border. So everybody thinks the wall is going to be the silver bullet solution. Now, this one here, the, and, the, and the liberals give them, Suzette, really neat names, okay? Uh, let me go through some of them, okay? The woman's right to choose. Uh, social security. They got half of that right, by the way. It is socialism, okay? But <laughs> but security. Who's secure with social security? Uh, I love this one. When you don't make enough money or you don't make any money, and, and of course, you, you're impoverished in that regard, you can apply for what they call the earned income tax credit. You didn't earn any income. So how, why would they call it the earned income tax credit? Is I earned the money. That's I work. Crazy. I well, I worked. I worked, and you work. That's who earned it. Okay. Um, how about this one? No, wait a second. Yeah. We're going to have to spend a few seconds here. Okay. So, earned income tax credit. Yes. Is a tax credit for mm -hmm. people that didn't earn income. Yep. Yep. I don't know all the math that's involved in it, but that's essentially what it is because they change the math every year in terms of levels and all that. But but basically, when I say a tax credit, by the by the way, Suzette, that's not a deduction. First, you don't have any income to deduct it from, okay? A, a tax credit, whenever you hear that, it means somebody's getting a check, okay? In the, in the, okay, so now, Affordable Care Act was one of my favorite ones, Okay. Yeah, I lost my health insurance during the Affordable Care Act days. Yeah, well, look at all the money you saved, right? Um, so uh, think about it. The Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. Okay, so now this one here, ranked choice voting is kind of a sexy name, and it sounds appealing, right? Uh, but I love your word for this. You call it low-frequency thinking when you, you just take something and think that all of these uh, – the, these these monikers for all these programs are going to be that silver bullet, right? I mean, yeah, the government yeah. is really so limited in what it can do and what it can. I mean, look at look at the programs, these programs right here. I mean, I think this ranked choice voting supports the administrative state. You yep. know, it supports that, which now has bloated to two point eight million in civilian unelected employees. Yeah. These are the people that are writing statutes. Yep. They're regulating everything from how big your herring is to 
how much water flushes in your toilet. Yep. They're, they have inspectors and people that you as the oppressed have to pay for. I mean, this is a big case in the Supreme Court now that I'm just listening to. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're expecting this herring industry to pay the people that come onto their ships, onto their fishing boats, up to 20% of what they earn. They have to pay well, these people to well, you know, them. And we, we talked about this in an earlier episode called The Fourth Branch of Government. Yep. which are these administrative agencies, the ABC agencies like EPA, uh, Department of Ed, OSHA, uh, all these unconstitutional agencies, FDA. And these agencies are under the auspices of the executive branch. And again, I got to go oh. back to my buddy, Rush, Rush Limbaugh. For those of you in Rio Linda, the executive branch is the president. Okay. Article two in the constitution. And since those agencies report up through him, he could dictate regulations that have the power of law. Okay. And so, they can fine you. You can be fined by them. They're writing the stat. What they, they I, I'm they, not they, sure they, what they, the difference between the statute and a law is. Well, well, wait a minute. Now, a regulation versus a law, Congress passes laws. In Article 1, Section 8, talks about the 18 enumerated powers of Congress, of which none of this stuff covers. And other than that, these regulations then have the power of law. They can put you in jail. They could take you home. They could take your car. They could fine take you. Your, they could fine you. Now, Take the president can dictate those, okay? The Supreme Court doesn't have enough arms and legs to look at all this stuff, right? Because you got to bring a suit in front of the Supreme Court to have things knocked down. But here's the thing. Um, the president can now write law, okay? And one is... I can hear you. One of the... One of the uh, the, the president egregious, can now write law. He can write law, but one of the about. most egregious ones, yeah, I just had a little blip here with my microphone, sorry, um, no was that was that uh, in during COVID, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, wrote a regulation that said landlords cannot evict a tenant for not paying rent during COVID, and those guys ended up losing their homes because they couldn't pay the mortgage. So, so here's a case where totally outside the bounds of their, their of their authority, they went in and wrote these regulations. And you mentioned a bunch of other ones. How much water can flush down my toilet? Really? So so anyway, we can go on and on and on about that, but and, it's, and, it's ridiculous. And they, these, what they, I believe their statutes is what these regulatory agencies yeah. um, write statutes. And then they put those in the budget. And they deliver them to Congress on the day they're going to vote. They don't come to Congress a month early. They don't have to be but, early but the so that they can feel through it. Wait a minute. Now. These regulations do not have to be approved by Congress. Okay. They can it's write outrageous. them on their own. Okay. It's they don't absolutely have to. outrageous. But well, the Congress, Congress does have to fund them. So they can write all the regulations they, they want. Can, they can, but they don't. But they don't, and that's the problem. Okay? That is the problem. They're yeah. very lethargic. That 2.8 million civilian employees, oh, and huge. most of these are in, I, I'm guessing most of these are in the D.C. metro area, yep. Northern Virginia, Maryland. I know where I lived, it was considered a bedroom community. It's By the way, you're not, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not also considering in that number the Federal Reserve employees, which are not considered government employees, but... Uh, okay, so let's go back to the Constitution for a minute, because that's what this is all about when you get right down to it. Now, your low-frequency person would say, wait a minute, <clears throat> Article 1, Section 4 says this, the times, place, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives, that's Congress, for those of you in Rio Linda, uh, <laughs> I just love, I just, I really miss Rush Limbaugh. Okay. But let me, let me start again. The times, places, and manners of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. Okay. 
but Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations, except as to the places of choosing senators. They chose that separately. Now, let's just look at that. You low, I call it low resolution thinker. You call it low frequency thinker. They're the same person. I say, they'll point to that and say, no, we can do ranked choice voting. It's constitutional. It's got to read this. But what they miss is the framework of a representative government, which this takes away. It actually takes away people's votes and repurposes those votes for candidates that they did not support. So, yeah, by law, if you just read that clause in black and white and treated it as such, you would say, oh, this is constitutional. No, it's not, because the essence of a representative government that, 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 that is the fabric of this whole document I'm holding in my hand, some 4,500 words called the U.S. Constitution, is being violated. And that's another way, it's a clever way, by the way, I got to give them a lot of credit, it's a clever way to take away one of the other ways to take take away our rights. Now, let's think about this. And I use this simple example. Suzette, you and I are playing tennis, okay? And you're beating me. But I say to you, well, I'm going to change the rules. You know, forget about this love and, you know, love 15, love, you know, forget about the score. I'm going to base it based on, I don't know, let's pick something. The well, number let's say of- you get to bring in, you get to bring in two additional players. So instead of it being one-on-one, yep. now it's me playing against you and your two buddies. Yeah, I, I could base I could base it based on the and number then- of steps. The number of steps each of us took. And I took less steps than you. Uh, that's because you kicked my butt. Uh, and, and I went by that. Or a basketball game, let's say, where... Uh, one minute left in the game, I'm beating you by 20 points, but I have more rebounds. Let's just change it. Let's just count rebounds on instead, right? Yeah, this, this, is is... What these, this is what these people do. So this is an example of changing the rules, okay? Yeah. Because you can't win. And, and and this, by the way, with the people that want to want to eliminate the Electoral College, the people that want to eliminate the, uh, uh, well, this ranked choice voting, the people that want to uh, jerk around with the number of Supreme Court justices, they have to change the rules in order to win their point of view. They can't do it through the voice of the people. So that's what this is. This here is an example, ranked choice voting. Uh, I call it, you know, you know, ranked choice of force, force choice voting. But, you know, this is a, a way that the left can actually win or try to win by just fundamentally changing the rules because their ideas suck. Their ideas, excuse my language, uh, their ideas aren't going to win the hearts and minds of the American people. So the only way that they can win is through the ballot initiative, not through voting. And that's that's what this is all about. I I don't think we can say it better than that. The um, the issue here is we have to stick with one voter, one one registered voter one vote candidate yep. you can't have you cannot have somebody voting for two three four people it, it's just crazy it it there's too much of a margin for error we are all of all of the inducements to vote have not worked and and the reason they haven't worked is because for many people they do not feel represented oh things like this and, and they'll feel less represented with this is that Oh, and, this you know, is crazy. Uh, and here's the other thing. So you mentioned early voting, mail-in voting, and all that. All those things just provide more opportunity for fraud, okay, and manipulation. The Democrats and the Republicans agree on that. Exactly. You know, they've yeah. all done, yeah. you know, there was a. Yeah. There have been joint commissions. There have been documentaries. Obama did a documentary. I think someone else did a documentary on the conservative side. Right. Everybody agrees that all of these attachments to how we vote induce cheating and people have always cheated in elections, you know, that yes, people have been yes, stuffing the ballot boxes and doing all kinds of horrible things. We know that, you know, but, you know, showing up when you have to show up to vote and with an ID and you're registered, I mean, 
it can't doesn't really get any easier than well, that. Well, well, this 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 is another area of confusion and another area where there can be an extreme amount of manipulation and fraud. It's just another one of those things along with what you mentioned. Oh yeah. Mail in, mail in, the voting and all that. No hand count ballots, you know, electronic voting machines, which who the hell knows there's no audit trail. So it's, it's just another avenue of opportunity to jury rig our elections and further take voter confidence away from, which is very low now with the with the electoral system i agree you know i think i think um i'm looking forward to uh learning more about this Do, is this on the ballot here in arizona at all is this they're something... trying to get it on i will have to ask steve zipperman about that but uh but but i think the message is though this is that no matter where you're listening to this this episode or this podcast around the country, be on, be on the lookout for this at, at your local, at your state, and then, of course, keep an eye on the federal elections, too. Be very careful about this and be and, and have your eyes open on this one. Eyes wide open, right? And yes. uh, it's coming. This is coming, okay? Along with, you know, the illegals coming in and the whole voting and all that, um, uh, th they want to win in unconstitutional ways. And every time that happens, Suzette, they're taking away, they're chipping away at your rights as an American. And so uh, this is what the real issue is. I mean, we could talk about the complexity. We could talk about the the uh, the craziness of the algorithm and how this works, how the third or second candidate could end up winning, even though the first candidate got the most votes. We could talk about all that stuff. But at the end of the day, this is a constitutional issue, in my opinion, and this is taken away what the framers of our Constitution wanted for all of us to be represent a representative government, not a democracy, and that they wanted your voice heard. Now, you're not always going to win. God, I voted in a lot of elections in Connecticut. I never, my candidate never won because of the liberalism that evolves in that communist state. But, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, though, you know, that's that's how this is laid out. Okay. Uh, and and this here, though, is manipulating the voice that we have. And that is the issue here, right? It's a constitutional issue. So anybody who wants to go to the Constitution, Article 1, Section 4, and read that to you and tell you that you're wrong about this is missing the point, okay? It's a very low-resolution argument that you're trying to make. Or, as my friend Suzette says, low frequency. You know, I don't know which one I like better. Low, re low resolution. Good. They, well, both, they got, both represent someone not really. I got low resolution from Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. He uses that. That's why I, I picked it up. For. I didn't make it up. Right. But you use low frequency. I don't know. I may like that one better. But uh, uh, either either way, we, I think we know what we're talking about. Right. And by the yeah. way, when we talk about low resolution or low frequency, let's not ever forget that this is th this. These kind of things are not done through ignorance or not understanding the Constitution or not understanding the framework of our country. Do not ever think that they're ignorant and they just don't know. This is all a a contrived plan. And and again, I'm gonna sound like a conspiracy theorist because because all my conspiracies so far have come true. Uh, this is a globalist Marxist movement that we're missing. Okay, another thing that we can fight about, we can fight about abortion, we can fight about guns, we can fight about racism, uh, we can we can fight about uh, economic uh, uh, inequality, if whatever that is, war, we, all this stuff, war, healthcare, COVID, healthcare, all these things. While we're fighting these individual things. We're missing the point, and this is where you know Steve Zipperman is good on this. Uh, we're, we're missing the overarching framework of what's going on with 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 all these issues. So I had a chance. I was with Carrie Lake uh, at a at a post Trump uh, party. She invited a few people to this, and she invited me because I'm working with Carrie Lake. Uh, and at this party was uh, was Jason Miller, who is Trump's close advisor. And so one of my questions to him was this. Of all the things that Trump did, and look, it doesn't matter whoever's listening here, if you like Trump or not, it doesn't matter, okay? The one biggest contribution I think he made, believe it or not, above and beyond the three Supreme Court justices he picked and the and the, and the low taxes and the regulation, reduction of regulations and getting this economy on, on, on board, didn't start a war, 
was going to be pulling out of Afghanistan, all that stuff. Pulled out of the WHO, he pulled out of the world, uh, he pulled out of, uh, uh, yeah, the WHO and the Paris Peace Accords, or Climate Accords. Of all the things he did, I think his biggest contribution to this country, Suzette, was he exposed what he calls a swamp, okay? And he's taken a beating for that, of course, because he's taken a lot of money out of people's pocket, right? And that's what's going on here, by the way. That was his biggest contribution. But here's my question to Jason Miller. So he talked about the swamp. I'm not sure everybody really understands what he really means by that. And uh, they may think about it in terms of the issues they care about. But when you look at the overarching assault on our country by the communists, by the, by the globalists, I said, I hopefully, hopefully President Trump can now take the argument to a higher level and talk about the overarching uh, it's it's an assault on, on 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 this country because if you think about it, and we we talked about this earlier in one of the episodes, Lenin had a three point plan. He said we need to uh, in, introduce communism in in Europe, which you could probably argue they're pretty much there. Okay, we need to do it in Asia. I mean, you go back with China 30, 40 years ago, they were not where they are today. They might have been semi, but. Uh, and then you, and the, and the last bastion, the third point on his plan was the United States. And so all of the things that are happening, whether it's climate change, global courts, uh, how the who wants to indoctrinate their mandates into our policies, uh, all this type of stuff is going after our capitalistic society and the, the, the framers uh, uh, foundation of of this of this country, right? And all of that stuff is under assault. So hopefully President Trump can take it to a higher level and un and have everybody understand that all these little issues, that not little, but issues that we're fighting over are in some cases distractions while they're, they're architecting this over overthrow of this country. Oh, it's underway. You know, I, it is, it's underway. And the, you know, like I say, they play the long game most people don't, and they don't, and you know, as they're getting propaganda, propaganda is used because it works. Yeah. You know, the father of propaganda was a guy named Edmonds, I believe, Bernays, Edmund Bernays, and he was a cousin to Sigmund Freud. And he hmm. was also an early psychiatrist, and he figured out how to you know how to how to manipulate the po the population. This has been going on since the beginning of time. Yeah. And you have to, you know, be paying attention and you have to care. You have to be pay at least about one thing. You mm -hmm. might not be able to care about everything, but you have to care about one thing, you know, like whether it's vote voting, whether it's your liberty, what to fully understand what your liberty is, that if you're afraid to speak, if you're afraid to say something in a room, you are no, that is not a free person. We say people are brave because they speak up. I mean, they're not, you know, you're either free or you're a slave. Yep. And th that, you know, and, and in our country now with censorship at an all time high, because the truth in the light of day, the cold stark truth is too hard for most people to take. And it's certainly the, our minders don't want that out there. So yeah, I think this ranked choice voting is a really bad idea. California did it. Do I need to say anything else? Okay. Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> the defense. Okay. Good, the good topic, Mark. The, the prosecution rests on that one, Susan, Suzette. Uh, <laughs> By the way, remember what Lenin said. He said, "A lie told often enough becomes the truth." Okay, so yep. you know, and and that's what's you know that's what's going on. So another attempt to hoodwink the American people. That's what all this is, and uh, so hopefully, please be vigilant on this one, and and fight against it. And you'll see initiatives come up on your, you know, referendums and all kinds of other stuff going on. Uh, you got to fight your legislators too, because they could pass a law to put this in place, and uh, uh, then I think all's lost in that regard. So. Yeah. Suzette, thank you very much uh, on this one and the work that you did to uh, to to bring this to light. Uh, and, you know, I, I just think that 
one of the many ways we're losing our freedoms. But uh, and this is one that's not, not getting talked a lot about, by the way. No, this, I didn't know about it. I yeah. didn't know about it. I think you brought it up. Maybe you were talking to Congressman mm-hmm. Gosar. Mm-hmm. And he brought it up, and then Steve talked about it. Steve yep. Zipperman in our last yep, yep. podcast, our, yep. our podcast from June fifteenth. If you guys want to listen, especially Arizona voters, you really need yep. to listen to that and get to know Steve. You know, he's he's really a good guy. He's Great an guy. attorney, and he really understands what's going on. He's been very active in Arizona politics and at the state legislature. So LD1, vote Zipperman. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hosting, hosting a meet and greet for Steve too as well uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, you're, you're going to that, I know. Yep. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, speaking of Congressman Paul Gosar, who I think is one of our best congressmen in the country, yep. uh, he is going to be on our show, Suzette. Uh, we're trying to work right now with some dates. So, and we're going to talk about the Emergency Spending Act where Again, another infringement on our rights where our representatives in Congress who control the power of the purse have no say about how this money is being spent, okay? And it's going right around them and Congress, uh, and he'll talk more about it, but uh, I, I I asked him personally, he's a friend of mine, and I asked him to come on the show. He was more than happy to do so. So uh, we're working on some dates right now with his people, uh, and we'll get that going uh, over the next couple of weeks. And We'll have Paul on to, to talk about this. So anyway, here we are. So fantastic. Well, Mark, great show, great topic, and good insights. I think we. I hope we got you guys thinking. Yeah, and and by the way, I want to close this by saying, did I tell you that dress really looks great on you? It's, I love oh, that dress. Thank you. Did I, I say have that? To tell I can't. I can't remember. Did I say anything about your dress? You uh, did. Yeah. Oh, I did. Okay. I love this dress. <laughs> From when I was a little girl, I always wanted to wear it. It was when, you know, we were five girls and we'd always get into our mother's closet when she was away. <laughs> and well, you know, this was one of those dresses. You know what's funny about that dress? Not funny about it, but like, I look at like uh, 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 the day that Trump got inaugurated and in, 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 uh, Melania with that beautiful blue outfit. Oh. She could only wear that once. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she can wear it again. It's like, oh, she's using her clothes again. Now you're not a public figure in that regard. Well, in, case, in some way you are. Well, but that's going to end up dress with, again. You think that about dress it. Should end, that that outfit should end up in a museum someday. Oh, I know, I know. And I I could wear the same golf shirt like th- two months from now. If I wear this golf shirt again, who's going to remember? Like, oh, Mark had a green golf shirt on. You know, uh, you know, even guys with ties and suits, and you could wear the same suit with a different tie, and you th- people think that back when we wore these suits. You know, but a woman, it's different, you know, and, and like Melania wearing that dress, I said to my wife, guess what? She can't wear that again. That's done. She's done. Okay. She's done. <laughs> you can wear that one again. Don't worry. Oh, I'm going to. <laughs> okay. okay, Suzette. Thanks a lot. This is great. Suzette Lawrence in Sedona, Arizona. And I will see you in a couple of weeks, I think, or less than a, oh, over a week and a half at Steve's place. That's yeah. Steve Zipperman's place. And this is Mark Deluzio from uh, Scottsdale, uh, where it's starting to warm up here and it's starting to get a little bit uh, warm. We're in the triple digits. So uh, we will see you on the next episode. This was episode 28 for the Constitution Solution, one podcast under God. Thanks, Suzette. Thank you, Mark. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Constitution Solution, one podcast under God where we hold that strict adherence to the Constitution is the solution to most of our country's problems. You can find other episodes on our website at 1787solution.com, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and most other platforms. We're your hosts, Mark Deluzio and Suzette Lawrence. Until next time, may God bless you and may God bless America.